to be magnified. He is worthy to be lifted on high. We thank God for his presence in this place. We thank God for your presence in this place to, to come and hear the, the words of God, to come and hear what God has for you today, this morning. So today, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 1. I'm going to be reading verses 21 to 23. John chapter 1, verses 21 to 23. I'm sorry, I'm going to be reading from verses 19 to 23. It says, Now this was John's testimony. When the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but he confessed freely. I am not the Messiah. They asked him, Then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of the one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. John said, I am the voice calling in the wilderness. Make straight way for the Lord. Now today my question to you is, what voice has your ears? In our society today, there are many voices crying out. There are many voices vying for, for your attention. Whether it be through television, social media, there's different podcasts, unlimited podcasts that you can listen to. Now these voices, they're crying out. These voices are speaking out to influence you. They're looking to influence the way you think. They're looking to influence and enlighten you or change your perspective about a certain topic. But whatever the goal is, what must be realized by every believer today is that the one who has your ear controls your will. You will your will consists of your mind. It consists of the things you think about. It consists of your determination, your purpose, your desire, what brings you joy and delight. See, the voice that cries out the loudest the voice that is consistent in your life will be the voice that drives you. That's good. See, the voice that you lend your ear to can, can be a voice of healing and restoration. But, but then it, it can also be a brokenness and destruction. Sadly, many people today are not able to distinguish the difference between the, the voices that is leading their life. Why? Because the voice that leads to death often disguises itself with eloquent and enticing speech. Each word persuading you to abandon God's path and purpose for you. Each word persuading you to, to leave behind the Christian faith. See, when, when Adam and Eve rejected God's command, they were influenced by an unfamiliar yet persuasive voice. They gave their ear and submitted their will to the lies of the enemy. That they could be elevated to a level of knowledge that was being withheld. And we hear this a lot today. These new voices that have come out. They come, they come out and claim to hold some secret knowledge about spiritual laws. Yet deny the maker of heaven and earth. Come on. But what happened? What happened when Adam and Eve followed the voice? Following this decision to listen to an uncircumcised voice, instead of walking boldly and confidently on where that voice told them to go, in their, in their newfound identity, in their new way of living, they, they, were, they were hiding in shame. Because what happened? What happened next is they encountered the voice of truth. In Genesis 3 verse 8, it says, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God. As he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? See, they hid from the voice that they once communed with. Because they yielded their ears. They offered their ears to receive the voice of the enemy. My God. Today, my question to you is, what voice has your ear? Oh, no. oh, no. See, the thing about the enemy is that he does not, he, he does not cause you to experience resistance in the flesh. Often, see, what happens with his voice 
is that his voice makes you feel good about the things that you're doing. Yeah. You, you receive the things that you're doing as good. And he said that it's the right thing to do. It's the right way to go. But when you encounter the voice of truth, when you come into contact with the voice of God, there are some things that you thought were right. There are some things that seemed right to you. Now being exposed to light, you see as wrong. What voice has your ear today? See, the voice that brings healing, the voice that brings restoration is often preceded by conviction. It makes your flesh a little uncomfortable, right? The, the Bible says in John 16, verse 8, it says that the, the one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is to convict the world concerning sin and righteousness. This is the reason why the world has a concept and an understanding of what is good versus bad. But nowadays it has become a little muddled. It's become murky, it's blurred. We don't know what's good, what's bad, right? Because your truth, if it pleases you, then it's good. As long as it doesn't harm me. But the thing about it is the Holy Spirit has a tone of voice. It has a tone of voice that, that is set to expose the heart of man. Now this breeds resistance in the flesh, unlike the voice of the enemy. It, it breeds resistance in the flesh. But although this exposure, this resistance that you're feeling can lead you to a path of life, can, can lead you to a way of deliverance, to be set free from sin and shame, Many often yield to the voice that makes them comfortable. Many often yield to the voice of the enemy. See, Jesus speaks of himself. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. When the Holy Spirit speaks, he exposes what was dark and bring it to light. And when, what we have to do is when we realize that we have been living in darkness, we should desire to follow the light. Come on. But if your ears is yielded to the voice of the enemy, if it's yielded to the voice of the world, it makes it hard for you to turn to the right way. What voice has your ears? See, people are more comfortable with continuing to remain bound because the problem is they think that they're free. I'm free. I have sexual freedom. I'm free in this world. But in actuality, you're bound. You're a slave to sin. You're a slave to this world. You're a slave of the enemy. What voice has your ears? Come on. Now, now John the Baptist, when, when he was confronted about his identity and what validated the work that he was doing, the work that he was doing, he was calling out, telling people to come and repent and be baptized. He quoted the passage found in Isaiah 40, verse 3. Uh -huh. He says, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now, in the context of Isaiah 40, the children of Israel, they were confronted with words of encouragement. That exile would not be their end. That there will be a deliverance that is set to come. That there will be a coming day of restoration. Isaiah 40 verse 1 to 5 reads. It says, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her, that her hard service has been completed. That her sins has been paid for. That she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every every valley, amen, every valley shall be raised up. Every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level. The rugged places in a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. On, and all the people will see it together. On, For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. <laughs> what voice has your ears today? <laughs> see, John was calling a people to repentance. He was calling a people to be baptized. See, the religious leaders of that time was a little confused. They were confused about what he was doing. They were confused about his sound. 
what he was proclaiming and who he was. See, him answering with Isaiah 40 verse 3 was almost to remind them of the prophecies written about the coming of the Lord. I am the voice that cries out. He was basically saying, I am the voice that is leading you to the one who can restore. I am the voice that is pointing you in the direction of the one who has come to give you life and salvation. Yes. Whose voice has your ears? See, Jesus testifies about himself. He testifies about himself in John 14, verse 6. He says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes no one. to the Father except through me. John the Baptist, as a voice crying out, directing them towards truth, reality, and life. He was directing them towards restoration for their soul. See, if you lend your ears and respond to the voice that is bringing good news, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are essentially responding to the voice of God calling you out of the wilderness and bringing you from death to life. What voice has your ears? It is the voice that comes to bring restoration. Or is it the voice that comes to bring destruction? See, Jesus says in John 10, verse 27 to 28, he says, my sheep listen to my voice. Other translation says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. No one. When Jesus has your ear, he has your heart. Out of the heart flows the desire, which is a component of your will. And like I mentioned before, whoever has your ear has your will. When Jesus yeah. has your ear, amen, your desires becomes that of wanting to please him. It becomes that of wanting to live according to his word, live according to how he has directed you. If you have not submitted your ears to the voice of God and are consumed by the voices of the world, who is in love with the world and calling you to live like the world? When the end comes, how will you hear him? How will you hear Jesus? See, Jesus says in, in John 10, he said in John 5, I believe, he says in John 5, 28 to 29, he says, do not be amazed at this. For a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice. But if now your voice is submitted to the world, how will you hear his voice when he comes? In verse 29, it says, and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live. And those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. Do you want to rise to live when the end comes? Or do you want to rise to be condemned? See, I encourage you today to consecrate your ears. Be mindful of what you're listening to. Consecrate your ears so that the voice that has your ears is the voice of God. And his messengers that he has sent to you. That he has sent to you to draw you closer to him. Because according to John 10, verse 1 through 5, when you have become acquainted with the voice of the Lord... Unlike Adam and Eve, when you hear a stranger's voice, a voice that is not circumcised by God, you will not follow it. Adam and Eve, they followed a stranger's voice. Strange. But in order for us to not follow a strange voice, we have to become acquainted with the voice of our creator. There's too many strange voices out here. Too much. They sound like they're telling the truth. Like it's so enticing. It's so persuasive. Uh -huh. But in actuality, they're drawing you away from God. They're drawing you from his order. They're drawing you from being aligned with his purpose. I encourage you to consecrate your ears. What are you listening to? What are you submitting your ears to? This is why. This is why it's important that you are mindful. Amen. That you are mindful of the people that you hang around. Not only the things that you listen to on social media, but your, your circle of friends, the people that you call friends. See, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, 
He says, do not be the sheep. Bad company ruins good morals. How can your morals be ruined? By unhealthy conversations. What is that? That is a sound that is traveling. That is a voice that you're listening to. Your morals become corrupted when surrounded by voices encouraging bad morals. Things that you wouldn't have dared participate in. Now you do it because the voices that has your ears is encouraging you. It's telling you that it's the right way to go. That it is a good thing to sleep around. It is a good thing, amen, to, to do this and do that. You have to consecrate your ears. Not only by the things that you listen to on social media, but even the friends on, that you have. Come on. What voice has your ears? It's time to stand alert. As believers, because the spirit is always at war with the flesh, you will often hear the voice of the enemy. Speak things about you contrary to the word of God. See, the world calls it intrusive thoughts, but it's the voice of the enemy. <laughs> trying, for, trying for you to do certain things. Yes. But as a child of God, you have, be, you have been given authority to tell that voice to shut up. Authority. Shut up and respond, I know who I am. I am the righteousness of God mm -hmm. called according to his purpose. I remember there was a season when I moved back home from when I moved back home from Tampa. My, God. my mind was being attacked by the enemy. This is where the enemy loves to play with me. It's in my mind. My mind was being attacked because things were not going right in my life. I was always used to um, I always was able to take care of myself financially. I didn't even have a job in high school, but I was able to take care of myself financially. But that season where I didn't have a job, there was no finances nowhere. And I didn't like asking people for money, not even my mom. There was no finances anywhere, right? The enemy started speaking thoughts or starting um, um, giving me thoughts of suicide. That I was not worth it. That well, what is the point of you being here? And one day I put on TDJs. It was the old TDJs. He was, he was talking about prayer. He was talking about prayer. And one of these started used to say, pray, pray. I started praying. I started responding to that voice that wanted me to take myself out. I started responding to that voice. Letting that voice know that I have authority. I have power. That I am the righteousness of God. That there is purpose. God has called me. He has kept me for a reason. That I have purpose. One of the things that the enemy tried to um, get me to believe was that the reason because you know for a long time I didn't know what my purpose was. The reason why you don't know what your purpose is because your life is going to end soon. My These are the things God. that would come to my mind. Jesus. But God reminded me that day that there is a voice. There's a voice that speaks louder than the enemy. Uh -huh. You have to choose to hear the voice of yeah, God. Enjoy. You have to choose to silence the voice of the enemy. There's a voice that is crying out. What voice has your ears? What voice has your ears? There's a voice crying out, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. There's a voice crying out. It's time for you to come up higher. It's time for you to come up higher in the Lord. It's time for you to come up higher in your prayer. It's time for you to come up higher in your worship. I need you to consecrate your ears to my voice. There's a voice calling out. For more of, you. more of you. God wants more of you. My God, he wants Lord. more of you. Lord. He desires to be intimate with you. He desires to have intimate relationship with you. But you have to do, you have to decide if you're going to silence the voice of the enemy. Are you going to silence these strange voices that is speaking the lies? Amen. These voices. What voice has your ears? My God. There's a voice that lies and there's a voice of truth. This voice of truth is the voice of God that is calling you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. The voice of truth will not lead you into death and destruction. Nope. The voice of truth will not cause you to, to go under. That's the right. voice of truth is leading you to life. There is Ways that you can go. There's a broad way and there's a narrow way. The broad way is more comfortable. 
The broad way pleases the flesh. The broad way, it, it, it pleases what your heart desire. But there is a voice that is calling you. Calling you to the narrow way. Because this is the way that is going to bring you to life. This is the way that is going to shut off bad habits and bad behaviors. Those things that you need help with. That is the way that you need to go. There's a voice calling out in the wilderness. Which voice are you going to listen to? Which voice will you lend your ears to? What voice will you lend your ears to? That is the question of today. When you go home, begin to take a look at your playlist on YouTube. Begin to take a look at your playlist on Spotify. See the things that you are listening to. And not only that, take it a step further. Decide to consecrate your ears for, for just seven days and see how your attitude change. See how your mind change. Instead of walking around seeing gloom and everything is dark and depressed. Instead of walking around with a cloud of over your head, you're going to see the glory of God begin to shine up on your life. Yeah. You're going to be begin to hear God even more clear. Some of us, we desire to hear the voice of God, but we're not willing to sacrifice those things that takes us away from the voice of God. Some of us desire to get close to God, but we're not willing to shut off those voices that draws us away from God. How can you draw near unto him if you're listening to voices that is contrary to his will? If you're listening to his voices that is contrary to his voices. How can you draw nearer unto him? You can't have two opposing desires. Consecrate your ears. So that your heart can be consecrated. Oh so that you can hear even more clearly. Jesus. Sometimes it's just simple things. Eliminate those things from your playlist. Jesus. Sometimes it's simple things. Don't Listen call that friend. You don't have to call that friend. That speaks of bad things. That speaks to bring bad morals. You don't have to call them. What, you watch, too. what voice are you listening to? It's what you watch. Yeah. Because what, what you're watching is sound that is coming out. Come on, and you're receiving it in your soul. You're receiving it in your spirit. And you don't even know how it's being how it's being rooted in your life. You just see one day you're acting one way that you never acted before. Yep. It is the voice that you're lending your ears to. What voice has your ears? I want you to stand up to your feet this morning. Amen. God, we just thank you for your presence in this place. In this place. We thank you, O oh Father God, for who you are. We thank you, O oh God, that today that you're calling us out of a dark place. That today that you have opened our minds to see that it is voices that we're listening to that is causing us to be separate from you. But today you've given us a revelation, God, that if we want to hear from you, God, we must silence the voice of the enemy. If we want to hear from you, oh God, we must silence those voices that speak contrary to you. Help us, Lord, Help us, Lord God, to follow after your ways, yes. Lord. Help us, Lord God, to yield to your voice. Help us, oh God, to yield to your instruction yes. and your direction. You call us to trust in you with all of our hearts. You call us to trust in you with all of our understanding. But in order for us to trust in you with our understanding, we must lend our ear to you. Yep. We must lend our ear to you. So this morning we make a declaration that our ears will be consecrated to you. That our ears will be open to receive what you have to say. That our ears will be able to distinguish, to distinguish, to discern the voice of the enemy. That when the enemy speaks, we silence him. But when you speak, oh God, we yeah. listen to you. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. God. Father God, this is the last month of the year. Jesus. And we decree and declare yeah. that we will not go into the new year the same. Yeah. We decree and declare yeah. that we shall walk up higher. Yeah. That we will come up higher in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. We decree and declare that we will not remain in the dark place. But we will come into your marvelous light. Jesus. We decree and declare, oh God. That you have for us, yeah. that we will come into it in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. We silence the voice of the enemy in Jesus' name. Yeah. We silence.
this morning. Step into the power that God has given you this morning. When the devil comes and speaks of bad things, you speak of good things that God has spoken to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The devil says that you have no body. The devil says that you are abandoned. But God says you are my child. God says you are my child. So proclaim, I am a child of God. I am the righteousness of God. I am called, hallelujah, separate from this world in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, the voice, the voice that we choose to listen to this morning, uh -huh. the voice that we choose to lend our ears to, Come the on. voice that we choose to submit our will to, yeah. will be the voice of God, yeah, God. in Jesus' name, right. in Jesus' name. Now, if there's anyone here, anyone in Facebook that does not know God, that does not know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I'm asking that you say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I confess today that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for sending him to die for my sin. Thank you for his resurrection. Please come into my life. Forgive me where I failed you and save my soul. In Jesus' name, now you're walking in the way of the Lord. Now you're walking in the way of the Lord. All you have to do is lend your voice. Lend your voice to God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Those who have accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, we just ask that you email us at houseoflovefl at yahoo.com so that we can walk alongside you in this journey with God. Now we're going to go ahead and transition.